This is the tragic and true tale of the death of the ice cream blonde, Thelma Todd. And this building behind me was once Thelma Todd's Sidewalk Cafe, where her story begins. Nice. Dead in Hollywood, Behind the Sign, Episode 4, The Night Thelma Todd Died. There were signs. There are always signs. Thelma Todd, the hot toddy, the ice cream blonde, Tinseltown's dream girl, Hollywood Land's comedian. I made that last one up. She earns all the nicknames. She was even a restaurateur. She owned a freaking restaurant. <laughs> December 16th, 1935. We don't really know what happened that night in Malibu. We probably never will. It sure is a lot of fun to speculate, though. Despite having a relatively short career in Hollywood, Thelma sure did leave her mark. She was born on July 29, 1906, in Lawrence, Massachusetts. She was whip smart. She excelled in her studies, and after graduating high school, she enrolled in teacher training. Thelma was never going to be a school teacher, and her mother, the OG Dina Lohan, made sure of it. It's the 1920s, and a new kind of woman is born. And that new woman was Thelma Todd. She smoked, she drank, she brawled, and she voted. 10,000, so that's what they expect me to take. Well, they seem to think you've been a little indiscreet before you met Skylar. Well, what do they expect for $10,000? At the age of 20, Thelma's mother pushed her into beauty pageants. Todd is crowned Miss Massachusetts in 1925 and competes in the Miss American pageant, but loses the crown. Still, she manages to attract a Hollywood talent agent who suggests Thelma give Hollywood a go. And boy, does she give it a go. Less than a year later, Thelma makes her screen debut in the film Fascinating Youth. Thelma is paired with Zazu Pitts in a series of popular two-reelers. Thelma was one of the few successful actors to transition from silent films to talkies. Her chirpy voice matched her breezy personality. She was so very funny. Her movies still make me laugh. Thelma appears in over 120 feature films and shorts. 120. She was only 29 when she died. She's a highly regarded comedian at a time when fem funny females are undervalued. Have they ever been valued? Thelma's first contract states that if she gains more than three pounds or loses more than six, the contract would be terminated. The potato clause. This contributed to Thelma's lifelong addiction to diet pills and alcohol. And that takes us back to the night of December 16th, 1935. The night Thelma Todd died. Thelma's at the peak of her showbiz career when she dies at the age of 29. 85 years later, the circumstances surrounding her untimely death threatened to eclipse Todd's barrier-breaking legacy. Did Thelma Todd commit suicide? Why, that's silly. Was it merely an unfortunate accident? Or was the ice cream blonde murdered? The list of suspects is long. Three months before Thelma's death, she receives several extortion letters. Two men calling themselves the Ace of Hearts threaten her with death if she doesn't pay them $10,000. What do they expect for $10,000? Thelma bought a gun and made sure everybody knew. On the night of her death, Thelma got into an altercation with her ex-husband, Pat. He was said to have been embarrassed by the guys Thelma took up with after they divorced. Suspects 3 and 4. Thelma was also linked to the infamous mobster, Lucky Luciano. The two supposedly had a tortuous relationship, 
and he allegedly beat Thelma and got her hooked on amphetamines. Did Thelma know too much? And get this, he skipped town the morning after her death. That's all, that's all, that's interesting, you know. <laughs> Roland West, Thelma's part-time lover and business partner. It was Roland's estranged wife's garage where Thelma's body is discovered. Roland was a failed film director and Thelma convinced Roland to invest in her restaurant, Thelma Todd's Sidewalk Cafe. It was a hit with the glitterati, but behind the scenes, it was bleeding them dry. Further complicating matters, Roland's estranged wife, Jewel Carmen, is co-owner of the cafe. Jewel didn't have a problem with her husband hooking up with Thelma, but when the restaurant started losing money, she threatened Thelma's life. Don't forget, it was Jewel's garage where Thelma's bodies discovered. There were so many people considered suspects, it got ridiculous after a while. I don't think it'll be very discolored. Are you making love to me? But what we do know for sure is the events leading up to Thelma's death. Well, how do I know? Perfectly heavenly. Thelma spent Saturday night, December 14th, at the legendary Cafe Trocadero, an upscale nightclub on Sunset Boulevard. She had a brief but unpleasant exchange with her ex-husband, Pat, who showed up with a younger woman on his arm. We had had a very humiliating public confrontation. He was deranged. He was lunatic. He didn't actually seem to like me very much. He had threatened to kill me in public. Why would he want to kill you in public? I think she meant he threatened in public to kill her. However, her friends stated that she was in good spirits, and they were aware of nothing unusual going on. So when the coroner ruled Thelma's death as suicide, it must have come as a great shock to them. I mean, I'm afraid it came as a great shock to him when he died, but... Thelma got wasted and partied the night away as if it was just another Saturday night, or Sunday night, or Monday night, or Tuesday night. Basically, Thelma liked to party. Thelma and Roland's apartment was on the second floor above the sidewalk cafe and next door to the private nightclub slash illicit gambling den, Joya. What did you say the name was? So, a couple of weekends ago, I drove out to Pacific Palisades to check out the area myself. It still looks exactly like it did back then. The only difference is the signage on the building. I wanted to retrace Thelma's last steps. Or sh should I say stumbles? Her last stumbles. Let's not forget, the girl was wasted. No judgments. This is the very spot where Thelma Todd's chauffeur dropped her off on the night of her death. She then went up these stairs. Thelma and Roland had their own little apartments above the sidewalk cafe. Supposedly on his deathbed, Roland admitted that he had locked her out that night. She shook the gate and Roland ignored her. Thelma was such a contradiction. A punching bag for abusive men and a strong-willed businesswoman. Which is why I'm obsessed with her. And when Roland didn't answer, that's when Thelma made the fateful decision to go warm herself up in her car. This is where Thelma and Roland's second floor apartment above the sidewalk cafe used to be. And this is where she would have come trying to get into her apartment that evening before realizing the door was locked. She then made her way up these stairs. Why did Thelma think it was a good idea to hike up 271 steps? As drunk as she was, she probably thought she would freeze to death if she didn't find shelter. And the warmth of her car was just up the hill parked in the garage of her lover's estranged wife. Seemed like a good idea at the time. And here are some of the steps Thelma took that fateful night. Some are on private land now. Some have crumbled. Some are exactly as they were when she climbed them that night. There's a theory that her body was placed in the garage because in the police report, it states that her shoes were perfectly clean. There's actual photographic evidence that her shoes weren't quote unquote perfectly cleaned. Thelma reaches the garage in Pasatano Drive. This is where she stores her car. And this is where her maid, Mae Whitehead, finds her in the morning, slumped over the steering wheel, dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. Can it really be as simple as an accident? It reminds me of when Princess Diana died. Nobody wanted to believe that a princess could die in a car crash. 
and nobody wanted to believe that Thelma's death could be an accident. Even Thelma's mother stood in front of this very garage where Thelma's body was discovered and told the reporters that her daughter had been murdered. She later recanted that statement. So what about all those suspects? There's no hard evidence linking anyone to Thelma's death. Just a lot of conjecture. The sad truth is, it would have only taken two minutes for this garage to fill up with carbon monoxide, killing whoever was inside. Thelma didn't stand a chance. If anyone should have been held responsible for Thelma's death, it should have been Roland West. On his deathbed, he allegedly admitted that he had locked Thelma out of their apartment that night. Are we really supposed to believe that his lover goes missing for an entire day? And he doesn't even check to see if her car's there? He knew he had locked her out the night before. So the next morning, Roland goes looking for Thelma and finds her dead in his estranged wife's garage. He totally freaks out and feeling responsible, which he totally was, he hightails it out of there knowing that Mae Whitehead would find the body Monday morning. And in the process, Roland inadvertently alters the crime scene, which is why aspects of Thelma's death remain unanswered to this day. The day after Thelma's body is discovered, her friends receive a Christmas card that reads, A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you, Thelma Todd. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the most terrifying. And sometimes random bad things happen even to movie stars. And that's when you find yourself behind the sign. The Madonna of her day, a hot mama, a peroxide blonde, the ice cream blonde, the hot toddy. Thelma earns all those nicknames and she deserves to be celebrated along with all the other comics of the 1930s that paved the way for future generations. So what about all those suspects? There's really no foul play. Oh my god. Slinky! Shh. Nothing linking anyone to Thomas Death. Okay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes. Did you get that? <laughs>